Welcome to this online worship service at Christ Alone Lutheran Church in Mequon and Thienesville, Wisconsin. We're delighted that you can join us. We are getting into the epiphany season with all of its joy and delight. And we hope that that joy is yours today as we dig into God's word and find there the comfort of Christ revealed for our salvation. As we begin our worship, let's turn our attention to the opening hymn, Arise and Shine in Splendor. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen. God invites us to come into his presence and worship him with humble and penitent hearts. Therefore, let us acknowledge our sinfulness and ask him to forgive us. Holy and merciful Father, I confess that I am by nature sinful and that I have disobeyed you in my thoughts words, and actions. I have done what is evil and failed to do what is good. For this I deserve your punishment, both now and in eternity. But I am truly sorry for my sins and trusting in my Savior, Jesus Christ, I pray. Lord, have mercy on me, a sinner. God, our Heavenly Father, has been merciful to us and has given his only Son to be the atoning sacrifice for our sins. Therefore, as a called servant of Christ and by his authority, I forgive you all your sins in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. In the peace of forgiveness, let us praise the Lord.
Let us pray. Almighty God, you gave your one and only Son to be the light of the world. Grant that your people, illumined by your word and sacraments, may shine with the radiance of Christ's glory, that he may be known, worshipped, and believed to the ends of the earth. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, who with you and the Holy Spirit lives and reigns, one God, now and forever. Amen. Our first reading today is from the book of Isaiah, chapter 62, beginning at verse 1. For Zion's sake, I will not keep silent. For Jerusalem's sake, I will not remain quiet. Till her vindication shines out like the dawn, her salvation like a blazing torch. The nations will see your vindication and all kings your glory. You will be called by a new name that the mouth of the Lord will bestow. You will be a crown of splendor in the Lord's hand, a royal diadem in the hand of your God. No longer will they call you deserted or name your land desolate, but you will be called Hephzibah in your land Beulah. For the Lord will take delight in you, and your land will be married. As a young man marries a young woman, so will your builder marry you. As a bridegroom rejoices over his bride, so will your God rejoice over you. Our second reading is from the book of Ephesians, chapter 3, beginning at verse 14. For this reason I kneel before the Father, from whom every family in heaven and on earth derives its name, I pray that out of his glorious riches he may strengthen you with power through his Spirit in your inner being, so that Christ may dwell in your hearts through faith. And I pray that you, being rooted and established in love, may have power, together with all the Lord's holy people, to grasp how wide and long and high and deep is the love of Christ, and to know this love that surpasses knowledge, that you may be filled to the measure of all the fullness of God. Now to him who is able to do immeasurably more than all we ask or imagine, according to his power that is at work within us, to him be glory in the church and in Christ Jesus throughout all generations forever and ever. Amen. The word of the Lord. The gospel acclamation for this day, Alleluia! We have seen his glory, the glory of the one and only Son who came from the Father, full of grace and truth. Alleluia! The gospel today recorded from the gospel according to St. John chapter 2, words that will also be the focus for today's sermon. On the third day, a wedding took place at Cana in Galilee. Jesus' mother was there, and Jesus and his disciples had also been invited to the wedding. When the wine was gone, Jesus' mother said to him, They have no more wine. Woman, why do you involve me? Jesus replied, My hour has not yet come. His mother said to the servants, Do whatever he tells you. Nearby stood six stone water jars, the kind used by the Jews for ceremonial washing, each holding from 20 to 30 gallons. Jesus said to the servants, Fill the jars with water. So they filled them to the brim. Then he told them, Now draw some out and take it to the master of the banquet. They did so, and the master of the banquet tasted the water that had been turned into wine. He did not realize where it had come from, though the servants who had drawn the water knew. Then he called the bridegroom aside and said, Everyone brings out the choice wine first, and then the cheaper wine after the guests have had too much to drink. But you have saved the best till now. What Jesus did here in Cana of Galilee was the first of the signs through which he revealed his glory and his disciples believed in him. The Gospel of the Lord. We continue with our hymn of the day, Hail to the Lord's Anointed. Yeah. 
grace, mercy, and peace to you from God our Father, through his Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. Amen. Would you like to hear a happy story? Not all of the stories in the Bible are happy ones. In fact, many of them are sad or distressing, usually because of the results of people rejecting God and bringing his judgment down upon themselves. But there are also many happy stories, and today we are going to take a closer look at one of them, our gospel reading for this day. As we do so, let me suggest that we truly need happy stories from God, what with all the sadness, sin, and its curse have brought into this world. It's not just that we want some good news. It's not just that we wish for a nice story. We need Isaiah's prophecies, for example, that Israel's son would bring justice to the nations, that he would bind up the brokenhearted and free captives from their spiritual prison. We need to hear his call that Israel should rise and shine, for her light has come and the glory of the Lord rises upon her. We need the angel's announcement, I bring you good news of great joy that will be for all the people. We need those wise men seeing the star over Bethlehem and being filled with joy. Hearts that are hurting for a thousand different reasons need to see Jesus. And that includes you, too. And see him you shall, as together we marvel at one of the six key miracles the Apostle John records in his gospel, the wedding at Cana. Other gospel writers include mention of dozens of Jesus' miraculous signs, but John, writing decades later, reflects on just six of them, and with each one speaks of the impact they had on people. Today we witness the first of those signs as we exult, O oh, happy Cana, and reflect on three reasons why both she and we can rejoice. Cana is a town just four miles straight north from Nazareth, where Jesus spent his growing up years. As you heard, Jesus' mother Mary was invited to a wedding there. We don't hear anything about her husband Joseph. And it may be that by this time, with Jesus being 30 years old, Joseph was already dead. But this friend of Mary's decided also to invite her son, Jesus, along with his disciples. This was just a very short time after Jesus was baptized in the Jordan River. So it could be there were just a few of his disciples with him, a half dozen or so. The key thing to note here is that Jesus was invited. Anyone who has ever planned a wedding knows the excruciating job of figuring out whom to invite because you, you just can't invite everyone you want. You pour over that list again and again, constantly thinking about whom you can afford to attend. We'd like to give this wedding planner a pat on the back because the decision was made to include Jesus. That was a brilliant move. It may have cost the couple sh some shekels to do this, but it would prove to make a big difference in how the day turned out. Here's the other thing. Jesus wanted to come. He was not too busy or preoccupied to spend the day rejoicing with this couple who was pledging their lives to each other. They wanted him there, and he wanted to be nowhere else. Let's pause for just a moment to consider this among the bigger story, the one that includes you. When God made his plans to save sinners, he decided to come physically to be with people, to be Emmanuel, God with us. That was not some light or incidental thing. It involved tremendous sacrifice on his part to empty himself of all the trappings of glory in heaven and to take on human flesh and be present with those whose lives had been terribly harmed by the curse of sin. He came to bear their sins and carry their sorrows. And he wanted to be nowhere else. We would make a huge mistake if we did not seize the opportunity and invite him to be a part of our lives, too. Like the two disciples from Emmaus who said to him, Stay with us, Lord, for it is evening. We rightly plead with Jesus to stay with us. How many of you use the common table prayer and beg him, Come, Lord Jesus, be our guest, and let these gifts to us be blessed. That's a great prayer. 
Can I remind you of some hymns that put it even more eloquently? How about that Christmas hymn? Ah, dearest Jesus, holy child, prepare a bed soft, undefiled within my heart that it may be a quiet chamber kept for thee. Or that Advent hymn. Redeemer, come, I open wide my heart to you. Here, Lord, abide. O oh, enter with your saving grace. Show me your kind and friendly face. What a privilege to know that Jesus delights in spending time with people. Would he be able to tell that he has received an invitation to be part of your life too? May it not be said of us that he was not invited. O oh, happy Cana, the Savior Jesus is among you. The heart of this story is what happened while Jesus was there. Weddings were big events, days long in some cases in that culture. They could go through a lot of food and drink. Well, someone underestimated just how much wine they would need, and Mary noticed. Maybe she was a friend of the host. She noticed the panicked look on his face and may have thought to herself, I bet Jesus could make something happen. You heard what she told him. They have no more wine. She didn't tell him exactly what to do, but the implication was pretty clear. Isn't it fascinating how Jesus replied to his mother? Woman, he said. It was a title of respect, but also a way of putting a little distance between him and her. Yes, she was his mother, but he was her Lord and Savior. Then he said literally, what is it to me and to you? As if to say, what concern is this of yours and mine? And then, my time has not yet come. What time is that? The time to do miracles? The time to show his power? The time to reveal himself as the promised Messiah of Israel? It was a gentle rebuke. Yet it did not deter Mary from believing that he would do something. Do whatever he tells you, she says to the servants. She must have had faith in her son's desire to help the couple. And he did ordering the servants to fill up the six heavy stone water jars, possibly up to a 150 gallons altogether, then telling them, draw some out and take it to the master of the banquet. Maybe they had already noticed this well water turning darker and darker. We have no indication that they questioned Jesus about it. All they knew is that the banquet master was happy, very happy with this new batch of wine he was tasting, telling the groom, everyone brings out the choice wine first, and then the cheaper wine after the guests have had too much to drink. But you have saved the best till now. The couple and all their guests were blessed because Jesus was there. I might remind a young couple of this lesson for their marriage. They will be blessed when Jesus is there. They will be blessed when Jesus is at the center of their lives, both in public and private. They will be blessed when he is welcomed and invited to be the silent listener to every conversation, the quiet companion at the supper table and in front of the television, when he is listening to the prayers that they pray together, and when his word and supper are their highlight at home and at church. It's amazing what fine wine of love and companion, compassion, of forgiveness and understanding, of support and closeness adorn the marriages of those who invite Jesus actively to be their guest at the wedding and for the whole marriage. I don't understand why any Christian, for example, would not want their wedding at this place in the church where Jesus' word is spoken and his praise is sung. And that makes no sense for a marriage that seeks his blessing. But what hap happens after is even more important. Yet it would be a mistake to limit this blessing only to marriage. We can recommend to any human being, invite Jesus to be a part of your life. Listen to his word. Believe in him. Make sure he knows he's welcome. In the words of Solomon, trust in the Lord with all your heart and he will make your path straight. Here's the second point. Oh, happy Cana, Jesus has brought you his blessings. One more thing is said that catches our attention. What Jesus did here in Cana of Galilee was the first of the signs 
through which he revealed his glory and his disciples believed in him. If someone were to ask, how do you know that Jesus is the Son of God, the Savior of the world? I would point to five things that Jesus pointed to as testimonies of him. Moses and the prophets talked to him in advance, in detail, about him. Uh, John the Baptist went before him, testifying by the Holy Spirit that he was the one. The Father called down from heaven at his baptism, This is my Son, whom I love. With him I am well pleased. Jesus' own words were convincing to people, because he spoke as one with authority from heaven. And then comes this one, Jesus' divine works, his miracles. We learn here that his disciples saw what had happened, They witnessed this wine miracle. Through it, Jesus revealed his glory, we're told. He lifted up just a corner of the cloak of his humanity and allowed them to see another side of him, the side that could quietly contradict the laws of nature and cause simple H2O to become the best of wines, without grapes, without yeast, and without going through the process of fermentation that is usually so necessary to make wine. It was miraculous. By doing that, Jesus opened up the eyes, especially of his disciples. They believed in him, we're told. He would be constantly working on their faith during his years of ministry among them, and it wouldn't be easy. They were like us. By nature, they were skeptics, unbelievers in God's promises. That's part of our sinful nature, too. And the thing that most condemns us We don't trust God, yet Jesus keeps working on them and us. And you can bet there was plenty of talk afterwards among those servants who knew where the wine had really come from. Did we really just see him turn water into fine wine, they might have asked? Who is this that was here? Later, when they heard stories of the mighty prophet from Galilee, who was healing the sick and giving sight to the blind, who drove out demons with a word and even raised the dead the same way, I can only imagine them saying, He was here. He was with us. He's the one we've been waiting for, the Messiah and Savior of Israel. How many people in heaven will look back to that day and praise the Lord for letting them hear about him. O happy Cana, Jesus has brought you to trust in him. The blessing of faith in Christ is everything. Far better than good wine or a happy marriage is a confidence that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God, and that by believing we may have life in his name. One of the members of our church told me, uh, about a day at the, ch- at the hospital when a chaplain came into the room. That chaplain was asked what religion he was, and the chaplain said he was Muslim. Our fellow Christian asked him, so do you believe that Jesus physically rose from the dead? The chaplain replied that to Muslims, Jesus was a great man, a good prophet, to be revered and honored. But when pressed, he could not say that Jesus rose from the dead. And Why? because admitting that miracle would proclaim him Lord and God and would change everything for the life of this Muslim gentleman. We can rejoice that Jesus held nothing back from Cana, nor from us. He revealed his nature as very God, come in the flesh. He gave us faith and new birth. Let's keep visiting Cana, friends. Let's keep fastening our eyes on the quiet yet oh-so-powerful things he does to testify to his godhood. Let's keep rejoicing in the happy story that Jesus Christ is Lord. Oh, happy Cana. Oh, happy us. Amen. Let's now confess our Christian confidence given by the Holy Spirit that Jesus is our Lord in the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father, through him all things were made. 
for us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, was incarnate of the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and became fully human. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who in unity with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Christian and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Let's join in the prayer of the church for Epiphany. Lord Jesus Christ, Son of God and Mary's Son, in the fullness of time you came into our world to save us from sin and death. You ushered in the day of grace so long foretold. Beloved Son of the Father, revered by the Magi, baptized by John, you came preaching and teaching, healing and comforting, forgiving and encouraging. You brought the light of life to those walking in darkness and the joy of salvation to those doomed to death. Prince of Peace, shine like a beacon for us and the people of our world. Let the good news of salvation be heard in the remotest corners of the earth. Open our own lips to speak your name to those around us who still live without faith or hope. Arouse us and our missionaries to flood the world with the light of your gospel. Lord of the Church, let your peace rule our hearts that we may use our gifts to serve you and each other in willing gratitude and joy. Watch over our loved ones near and far that they may remember your love and rejoice in your salvation. Strengthen the faith of the sick and the disheartened. Give hope to those in despair and comfort those who mourn. Be gracious to all and lead us to reflect your love in everything we say and do. Finally, bring us and all your believers to the heavenly home where we will stand in the full light of your glory and with all your saints and angels sing the everlasting song of triumph. In the name of Jesus, who also taught us to pray, our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name, your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Brothers and sisters, go now in peace, live in harmony with one another, serve the Lord with gladness. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look on you with favor and grant you peace. Amen. We close our service by singing the hymn, Joyously, I Praise My Savior.
We are so glad that you came to join us today and pray that this service has been a blessing to your faith. And we greatly appreciate the support that you give to this ministry, uh, both in finances as well as being able to engage others in hearing this great news. You are the missionaries of Christ, revealing the word to those around you. May God richly bless you in the week to come as you live in the happiness of a Christ revealed. And now I invite you to hang around for just a few more minutes as we watch this month's edition of The Wells Connection. Hello, I'm Wells President Mark Schrader. If 2020 was a year of isolation, then 2021 was a wonderful reminder of the importance of gathering in community, in person, to worship God and to serve others. That's the reason local congregations exist, and our synod exists to support our congregations. Here's a brief look at the year just passed. Delegates to the Synod Convention passed a resolution to start 100 new home missions in 10 years beginning in July 2023. It's an ambitious goal, reflecting confidence in our Savior and the gifts He's given us to spread His Word. It just makes me appreciate how ready, how willing Synod is to um, carry out this work. You know, that we're not just looking to sustain, we're not just looking to um, kind of plateau or stay where we are, but we understand that this, this gospel message is so important. While the pandemic opened new opportunities for online ministries overseas, 2021 saw a renewed blossoming of in-person mission work. As we restarted the construction process for our training center in Vietnam and developed plans to send new missionaries to South America, Africa, even the United Kingdom. I've been praying for it very earnestly and I can't tell you how rejoiced I am. I just can't. <laughs> Come first, it's just wonderful. Yeah. The construction of a new field house at Martin Luther College was just one visible example of how God blessed our ministerial education system in 2021. We still face a shortage of pastors and teachers, which is why there is a renewed emphasis on recruiting future students and reducing or eliminating the student loan debt of our new graduates. We are going to be the future uh, pastors and teachers and called workers uh, in the Wells Synod. And it's just very encouraging to know that there's so many um, congregations and other people in schools that are supporting us like they are. In 2021, Congregational Services released a suite of new resources to help congregations seize opportunities for gospel outreach and spiritual growth. A key theme is helping lay people realize their role as the frontline workers in Christ's kingdom. And the Holy Spirit can work very strongly through those those one-on-one -on -one relationships with people we know, with family and friends and acquaintances and sometimes strangers too. Christian Aid and Relief had a busy year in 2021 as the pandemic continued to cause illness, upset supply chains and destabilize employment. Where there was need, Christian Aid and Relief provided help on behalf of all of us. The pastor Give me the truth, trust me, uh, you need help. Um, I never before <laughs> uh, say something to somebody else where I, I need the support, no? One of the more visible Wells events of 2021 was the release of the new hymnal. Tens of thousands of copies were shipped to congregations this past fall, and new shipments are arriving daily. Much more than just a collection of hymns, the new hymnal is part of a package of resources, both print 
and digital that will serve congregations as we worship our Savior for decades to come. The way that music uh, connects text to the head and to the heart in such a special, memorable way is invaluable. There's nothing like it. The future leaders of our church are our children and young adults. And one major way our synod serves them is through the Wells International Youth Rally. After a lot of planning in 2021, the rally is set for this summer in Tennessee, with 2,500 young people expected. We don't yet know all the challenges or opportunities 2022 will bring, but we do know that our heavenly future is secure in Christ, regardless of earthly events. While we're here, God has given us work to do in our families, in our churches, and the world, and He will bless us. Music